Hello, my friends, it's Tim from Cape Cod. Recently, I was featured in PhotoFocus magazine to talk a little bit about how I utilize the Pentax K1's Astro Tracer function in order to create a lot of the Milky Way landscape shots that you've seen me post on my website and on my social media. Now, there's a ton of different ways that you can get great Milky Way shots, but I really do enjoy using the Pentax Astro Trace system. And if you're somebody who has a Pentax, or maybe you're even thinking about just getting a tracker, this video is probably going to apply well to you. That said, if you're interested in reading the article, that link is in the description below. But I'm a visual learner, and if you're watching this video, you may be too. So let's get into it. So why would you want to use a tracker or the Pentax Astro Tracer for your photography? Couldn't you just all do it in one shot in what I like to call the run and gun method? Well, sure, but let's talk about that. And what the heck is the run and gun method? Chances are, if you're someone who's just getting involved in astrophotography and you're trying to get a quick good shot, you're going to take a short exposure because you don't want the stars to move through that shot at all. You want really nice pinpoint stars. Now there's a general rule of thumb that helps you get there. If you're shooting with a full frame camera, there's something called the rule of 500s. It's kind of a loose idea about how long you can shoot by a simple calculation. So you take whatever millimeters you're shooting at, let's say 20 millimeters, and you divide that into 500, you get 25. That means after 25 seconds, you're gonna start to see star trailing in your shot. Of course, if you've got a crop sensor camera, you might have to adjust that equation a little bit, but it gives you kind of a good starting point to figure it out. Because you've only got a very short amount of time, you have to rely on your two other main settings to do all that heavy lifting, to get all that light in, which means that you're gonna have to crank up your ISO to a level that might be a little uncomfortable for you, maybe 3,200 or even 4,000, might even be a little bit higher depending on your camera. And you're going to have to use a really wide aperture, f2.8, 1.8, f2, somewhere in there, because again, time is the thing that you really cannot leverage here. Everything else is what's available to you. And with that comes a cost. Higher ISO shots can be a little bit on the grainy side, especially on older cameras, and also they tend to take away some of the more deep or rich color that you would get in the night sky. On top of that, if you're shooting at a really wide aperture, some lenses don't do all that great in the corners. There's something called coma, which gives you sort of pancakey stars up in those corners. And if you have those, your only solution is to maybe start raising that aperture number again, but now you're squeezing that light out, that light that you really need in order to get that shot. So the run and gun method is a compromise. Short time, high ISO, wide aperture. I've done a lot of shots with that setup and it's worked out really well for me. Yes, they could be better, but your best technique is the one available to you. However, if you have access to a tracker or the Pentax K1's Astro Tracer, that does change things for the better. Now imagine that time is not an issue anymore. Now you have all the time you need to get the shot that you want. Because with a tracker or the Astro Tracer system, essentially your camera is tracking the sky as it moves, which means no star trails. That also now means that you can take some of that leverage away from the other two settings that might be causing some issues. So if you have a camera that doesn't do well with high ISO, that's okay now. Dial it down, dial it way down, 800, 640, 400. Maybe you don't have a lens that stops to f2.8, or maybe you don't like the way your lens looks at f2.8. That's okay. You can get that aperture back up into the fours, four and a half, five. You'll be totally fine in that case because now time is doing more of that lifting and more of the hard work for you thanks to the tracking. Of course, everything has its price. And while Astro Tracer and tracking is a great way to get nice low ISO clean shots with lenses that aren't necessarily the best for traditional astro landscape work, the price to be paid here is thinking about what happens to your foreground during a track shot. Well, of course, your sensor or your camera body is moving depending on what device you're using, which means that its relative view of the stars has not changed, but your foreground has now blurred, and that will require you to take a second shot and sandwich that in in post-processing later. That's not too difficult to do in most cases. Generally, it's pretty easy if you have a nice, clean horizon. 
However, if you have something in the foreground that's kind of tall that breaks the sky, like a telephone pole or a tree or wires, that can turn into a little bit of a post-processing nightmare. So that said, I don't always use the Astro Tracer function in certain situations just because of that post-processing issue. Now the K1 is fantastic at low light. It's got good dynamic range. I will say that for the most part, it's very clean at higher ISOs, but I do really prefer how a tracked shot looks. How do you go about getting the elusive tracked shot? Well, as I mentioned, you can use the Pentax K1's Astro Tracer or any Pentax camera that has that Astro Tracer functionality. Or if you're not part of the Pentax system, you can find an actual tracker, a standalone unit that will sandwich between your tripod and your camera. Requires a little bit of calibration in the field. People I've spoken to who utilize that type of tracker says it takes about 10 minutes or so to get up and running. But other than that, you're good to go. And the beauty of those trackers is that you can go a little bit longer, actually a lot longer than you could with the Pentax. Because it's built in on the Pentax, you only have enough space to go about five minutes with that unit because the sensor inside is eventually gonna hit a wall. It just can't go any further. So that's a limitation. However, I will say that in most cases, I am photographing two and a half to three minutes. And that works out really well for me. The reason I don't go any longer is because when I do, I start to notice the smearing or star trailing in the corners of the shot. I shoot with the 15 to 30 primarily. That's my go-to lens for just about all my night work. And that might just be something specific to that lens. Your mileage may vary if you have a different lens, but if you have the 15 to 30, two and a half minutes or so is really a good place to start. Okay, so let's say you're outside and you're ready to get your first Astro Traced shot. We all know that the Pentax K1 has a built-in GPS, and the GPS is really important because that's what's gonna tell your Astro Tracer where you are and how to move that sensor. If you have a Pentax unit that does not have an internal GPS, you will need an external one. That is a necessary component. Now the GPS is great. It has always worked well. I frequently get a signal even in the house, but there is one extra thing that you can do just to guarantee that you have the most certain GPS lock possible, and that's going into the menu system and finding the GPS compass calibration option. It just takes a minute to do. Essentially, you're just gonna go in and tell it that you're gonna do a manual calibration. And all that involves is spinning the camera on three different axes. So you're gonna turn it forward, you're gonna spin it around, and you're gonna tumble it. And it's gonna let you know when it's good to go. Less than a minute, you've done the best you can to guarantee that that GPS knows where you're at. Of course, there's the usual stuff that could happen. You're close to a metal structure, you have a giant wall next to you for some reason. The, the usual GPS laws of physics will apply here. But if you're out in the middle of a field and you do the calibration, it should be pretty quick. The next thing you're going to do is just as easy as the first thing. It's also the last thing and only the second thing. So this will go quickly. You're gonna move ahead into the Astro Tracer menu option and you're going to choose precise calibration. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna rotate, spin, and tumble the camera body until Astro Tracer tells you it has been precisely calibrated. And ideally, that takes less than a minute. Spin carefully. You are rotating and moving your camera in odd ways in the middle of the night. So don't rush, it will get done. But if you do these two steps enough, on average it does take less than two minutes to complete. And now you've done everything that you could possibly do to make sure that your camera completely understands where it is and how you're about to use it. I mentioned earlier on that one of the the prices you pay for using Astro Tracer is having to take a second shot for the landscape or for your foreground and then sandwiching it together in post-production in Photoshop or some other merging software. Again, it's not a big deal, but one thing that I will tell you that I do to make sure that everything blends a little bit better is that I use the same settings for my foreground as I did for the sky. I just shut the Astro Tracer off. I shoot in areas that have some degree of light pollution, which can make blending horizons a little bit tough if I don't have the same exposure close to the ground as I did at the bottom of the sky. It'll make more sense if you, if you try to do this at some point where you've maybe completely changed your settings to something else for your, your foreground shot. 
So wherever possible, I really advise that you don't change any of the settings from the sky to the foreground other than shutting off the Astro Tracer. One other thing to be aware of has to do with manual lenses. The great thing about the Pentax system, besides all the other things I mentioned, is that you can use all these great vintage lenses, and I have, along with Astro Tracer, it's worked out really well. But because a lot of these lenses don't have chips, your camera doesn't know how many millimeters it's shooting at. And that's really important for the speed at which the sensor is moved by Astro Tracer. In most cases, that's fine because when you put your lens on the camera and turn the camera on, if it doesn't get that communication, it asks you to tell it, well, how many millimeters is this? So you just put that in and you're good to go. Here's something I accidentally discovered. If you do not shut your camera off and you go ahead and switch to another manual lens after having used one, you won't be asked that question. So if you go from a 50 millimeter to a 20 millimeter lens, let's say, and you didn't shut your camera off, Astro Tracer will still think that you're shooting at 50 millimeters and you will get star trails because it is not moving the sensor at the right speed for your lens. So don't make the mistake that I did. Please make sure that you shut your camera off between lens changes. Probably good practice anyway, but maybe when you're in a hurry, not something you think about. It was a lesson that I learned because I thought something was wrong with the camera and it took maybe about 10 minutes for me to figure out that there was something wrong with the photographer. So that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're dabbling in Astro Tracer or thinking about track shots and why it might be a good idea, the important thing is that you just go out and have fun and try it. Night photography, from what I can tell, is probably one of the most unnecessarily over-engineered forms of photography out there. I see so many videos saying, here's how to do this simple thing, and you look at the running time on the video, it's 90 minutes. There's no reason for that, <laughs> none whatsoever. The point is to get outside and enjoy the night sky and hopefully get some great shots as you do so. And Astro Tracer sounds fancy, and it is, but it is very easy to use as I hope I have illustrated here. I teach night photography workshops and offer private guided night photography tours here on Cape Cod. So if you plan on visiting the area, you live here or you just wanna learn more, check out my website, capecodworkshops.com. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching.